Hi, I'm Jim Smyrniotopoulos, and this is a short video about the differential diagnosis for spinal masses. We have no disclosures. Spinal diseases are commonly categorized as intramedullary lesions, which expand the spinal cord or the phylum terminale, intradural extramedullary lesions, which are basically inside of the subarachnoid space and surrounded by CSF, and extradural lesions, which primarily arise from the bone or the discs or the ligaments, either inside or outside of the spinal canal. If we look at these diagrams, we can refer back to the work of Shapiro, whose classic textbook of myelography defined a mechanism for localizing spinal masses using positive contrast within the subarachnoid space. If the shadow of the spinal cord is expanded, we have an intramedullary lesion, oftentimes called intradural intramedullary. If we have a lesion that is outside the cord but within the subarachnoid space, we have an intradural extramedullary lesion. And if we have an extradural lesion, it will displace the CSF column with contrast as well as the cord at the same time. Here are three examples of these masses expansion of the cord from this cervical spine astrocytoma in a child, displacement of the cord by this uh, intradural extramedullary soft tissue tumor called a solitary fibrous tumor, but a meningioma would look virtually identical. And here we have an example of an extradural lesion, the most common and classic presentation for a disc herniation. Notice that this patient also has a lesion that is intradural but extramedullary, which in this case was a paraganglioma. When we consider intramedullary lesions for this presentation, we're going to primarily be focusing on neoplastic processes. The most common intrinsic neoplasm of the spinal cord will be a glioma, usually an ependymoma, and if we think about the localization, cervical spine intramedullary lesions in adults are usually an ependymoma, while the same location in a child would be an astrocytoma. Lesions that occur in the conus medullaris and cauda equina are commonly going to be the mixopapillary type of ependymoma, but other lesions may occur here, including paragangliomas. And if we see flow voids within the CSF, we might consider hypervascular tumors like hemangioblastoma and paraganglioma.